Hello, everyone, and uh, and welcome to the India Joy VFX Summit 2021. Uh, very, very happy for, for this invitation to be hosting this particular panel discussion and, and to have my distinguished peers and friends and colleagues with me. Uh, so the panel discussion today on VFX freelance uh, artists and how to succeed as a freelancer in the industry, which is a very, very relevant topic because Today is the day of division of work and getting work done smartly, intelligently, with quality for the freelancers, for the studios. Uh, so I think it's a fantastic topic that we have right now. We have with us uh, panelist Vicky Lau. Vicky Lau is a VFX artist, generalist, VR developer, TEDx speaker, entrepreneur, and educator from, from Singapore uh, who broke into Hollywood uh, as an outsider. That's excellent. Uh, Vicky, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah. We have Pavan with us. Pavan is a VFX director, visual effects supervisor from Element VFX. Pavan has been working for 25 years in the entertainment industry, working from assistant editor to visual effects supervisor. Welcome, welcome on board, Pavan. Mangesh Palkrit uh, is a VFX supervisor, head, Digico Studios, with over 18 plus years of experience in the VFX industry, doing on-set and on-floor supervision, 3D animation pipeline development, live action simulation, 2D to 3D conversion, and virtual production. Welcome, Mangesh. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And, and really, really great to have you uh, with us today uh, on this panel. So, so guys, uh, as I said, that we have a topic in hand today, which is about that of a freelancer and how to succeed in this industry as a freelancer. And uh, that goes into from all the paradigms and we can talk about it one by one from challenges to how we proceed and all that. If you can take a little bit of time, I'll start with how I see my screen with Vicky. Uh, if you can tell a little bit about yourself and what you do and then Mangesh and then, then Pavan. Thank you. Okay, so I'm a visual effects freelancer. I do visual effects composting, although generally um, I'm also a generalist in that sense. Uh, I've worked on over 30 plus projects with over 20 plus studios, and mostly all of them actually in the United States. And um, yeah, so there you go. That's great. Fantastic. Yes, Mangesh. Uh, yeah, um, as a uh, as you pronounced earlier, I've got almost 18 plus years of experience where I started as a modeler and uh, from modeling to the journey till uh, VFX supervisor. So that was uh, uh, quite a challenge which I have faced uh, in the earlier times. I was a VFX uh, supervisor, freelance uh, supervisor. I was doing, uh, I mean, uh, I was there in Dubai. So basically being a freelancer, I've got to learn a lot, many things because you don't have an exact boundary out there. To you, because you have to work in this or that. So you have right. uh, your own freedom to work, uh, your own efforts to work on because there is no one else to handhold. So that phase gave me a, 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 a good learning curve. And because of that, there are a lot of uh, uh, things happen. Uh, in this and now currently um, uh, I'm with uh, Digico Studios off lately as you join. So yeah, that's about it. Great, great. That's amazing. Vicky is in Singapore. Mangesh is, uh, I believe, in Pune, right? And Pavan, if you can talk about a little bit about yourself. Pavan is from London, uh, joining us this time. So what you do, how you do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I've been in the VFX industry since 95. I started as an assistant editor. Grew into VFX, did flame, compositing, then I joined Rhythm and Hughes, then I moved to London in 2007 and I've worked as a freelancer in more than like 40, 50 studios in London over the six, seven years. Then I set up my own small studio and we do, I mean, a lot of uh, hiring of freelancers all the time. So it's the right time. I mean, it's a really good time to talk about this yeah. right great great so so guys you know want to make it uh, you know really really interactive for people listening like as if they're so they can delve in because oftentimes it feels that uh, you know the work that we do has few challenges of course and you know the way we get it done there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of volume 
and of course there's a there's a there's an attempt to to now uh, especially from india and from all over the place to kind of keep to the qualities and we all are aiming at uh, a lot of high quality content right content creation is on the rise uh you know investments in mne sector is on the rise we're chasing photo real content we're developing content we are we we're, we're chasing we, we, we each other we're chasing each other basically to compete with very very high end competitive stuff now in terms of um you know um as a freelancer what do you think that uh, you know i'll i'll start with uh, say now let's go opposite uh, let's start with pavan uh, pavan the kind of work that you do if you can give a little bit of example and you probably what are the challenges or what are the you know how do you overcome them what are the prominent freelance platforms how do you discover prominent freelancers how do you uh, you know uh, get those freelancers to do the kind of work that you do you have a particular requirement do you get them easily if yes or if not what are the platforms that you generally look at and uh, and uh, what what's the size of projects that you guys have do you have a lot of work for them do you have the need for those freelancers up work for those freelancers yep in terms of need that depends on projects how many projects you have at one time so right now we are doing two amazon shows so okay we are always looking for people and it's always been like we always go back to the people we've worked with before and who have delivered yep. a good quality of work or have been responsible so the first thing we always look for freelancers as people being responsible if you keep aside uh, work ethics is the most important thing that if they're doing other work then the one they're doing for us they let us know that they're available to put in x number of hours in a week because now it's right. become all completely remote compared to uh before it was like we had an office space like a couple of years back before the covid and now we don't right. require the office space so it's become like everything is more remote throughout and we're always looking for people especially now it's an impossible time to find people with the right. industry being so busy so all the freelancers which we used to work with have already been booked for months or it's been like a really tough thing getting it, freelancers exactly we, yeah the thing is we always want to make sure that we get people who are responsible as a top priority compared to even if they can do less so if they give a commitment the commitment is very important then being able to do 50 shots so if they say i can do two shots in a week that is something right. as a commitment as a responsible and they should live up to it that is like one of the most uh, things which i see lacking in freelancers a lot so when you hire somebody right. they like picked up two other projects they're busy with other things and they don't deliver on time so with 3d people it's a complete different pipeline so now we have zoom so we're doing lots of zoom meetings all the time so we can assign multiple shots to multiple people at the same time and we have like we use dropbox a lot so everybody's files are synced and some people just need to be like really uh the right word to say is uh like years back if you needed people the visas were an issue so you need to get some to be from another country it's like i we had got people from france before because there was no issues of visas now with the brexit and all these things so right we can't hire europeans anymore until we get the visa structure done so i mean there are lots of good advantages because of covid in terms of uh, finding people all over the world and doing it online yep and right I don't know but yeah, I'll leave it right but you yeah. mentioned a, you mentioned before i before i come to mangesh you yeah. mentioned a very good point about about work ethics and about uh, you know the, the responsibility of delivering a certain number of shots even if it's less we keep to the commitment and all that what i have uh, faced pavan is, is there is a little bit of a dilemma and to all of you and and because you mentioned it right now pavan that you know we we do work uh, here also with a lot of uh there there are pocket studios right and those pocket studios are basically studios made of individuals it can be one it can be two it can be three people yeah. 
or it can be five people in a particular location. But the dependent, the dependability of delivering a particular quality of a particular product or movie from a certain place may be higher than another, right? Sometimes I have seen that I might spend extra money and give out a shot to a particular place in Slovak or Germany or whatever in India as well. But there is a little bit of a little bit of a gap with uh, at times with work ethics because at times volume is is what is uh, what is being chased, right? So when you come back and when you talk about okay, give me exactly this and this is the reference that I've shown you and this is what I wanted. I didn't want this. And they said, that, no, you have to pay any extra for that because, no, I created what I was briefed about, you know. So <laughs> these are the issues which are, which, are, which are very common, right? But sometimes it get easily solved with senior people, not necessarily people sitting abroad, rather than people who are dealing mass work. Do you think that, that, that happens? You know, because yeah, I have faced quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, I have, uh, see, when usually when we hire somebody, it's through networking. So somebody refers right. somebody, what happens there is the other person has referred somebody with an amazing killer reel. Okay. Right. You look at the reel and you expect him to be at a level that you expect, okay, this guy has done this shots. So he will okay. deliver something close to what he showed. But what we get is not at yes. all close to what you expect. And right. everybody, I mean, somewhere I think... Uh, with all these multiple job offers at a time, people have kind of reduced their passion and they've started to do more work and give less quality. That's very true. Probably one very of the true. reasons. Probably one of the mm. reasons. So when I give a shot or somebody gives me a shot, like mm. in the last, uh, I would say, six, seven years, I have not sent a single letter saying, oh, I'm available for work. Because the people right. I worked with, like the 30, 40 studios I worked with in the past in London as a freelancer, they like, oh, I have this load of work. Can you ship it out to India or can you get it done at a lower cost or X, Y, Z? And their costs are usually ridiculous in a lot of ways. So right. they're, not like, right. uh, they're not like you would expect. So you say, no, I don't want to get into that. But at the same time, you try to help them out. And it's, it's a lot. It's a two-edged sword. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So right. freelancers, when you hire companies and all, so you expect them to be like you send them a test photo shot. They send you an amazing shot back, which looks perfect. And then you send them 10 right. more shots. So those shots are not in the quality of the test. So these are the right. issues like we've always had when we try to outsource work. And Exactly, the gap which remains, yeah. Yeah, some of my freelance artists are really, really nice. Like, they take responsibility and make sure it's at a good level instead of me sending them 12 feedbacks for a shot. So some people right. just don't have that niche. <laughs> right. Some people yes. just don't have that niche to, like, quality check their shots. And basically, it's like, oh, I'm doing it at a lower cost. But it doesn't matter if you're doing it at a lower cost. You're doing it at a cost which is correct for... India at this point. So you're that not doing product, yes, and for yeah. India. Yes. So just because it comes from London, like everybody in London knows you send it to India, you get it done cheaper. Yep. It's right. not like they are not going to pay you London rates to do the work in India. Right. So if you're doing it in London, you get London rates. But the point is oh, but it's always that issue that negotiating rates, talking to them and then they say, Oh, I need more for this and more for that. But the point is, you can do amazing work and you have to be ethically correct in what you have accepted and do it to the best you can. That's all right. I expect from a freelancer. And like I've had two people just disappear for a week and not come back. And work. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, this doesn't <laughs> right. work. This doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying this is just right. from India. Like we've had people from everywhere, yeah. Google right. and from Jordan from different different places US so I've had two people like disappear for a week and then like oh here's my invoice and like I'm not paying you you just disappeared so yeah that's right 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 there's lots of issues so yeah I mean, lots of things so yeah yeah
Okay. So, so Mangesh is talking the same, uh, you know, yes. picking up from where where Pavan left, and it's the same thing. You know, we do have a lot of work. Uh, there is, of course, up work for VFX, and we have a lot of work for CG and VFX. So, right. you know, considering what are the platforms you use, how do you how do you face these challenges? Because considering the platforms and the work, what is what is your method of choosing the freelancers? See, uh, honestly, uh, the way I choose my team, uh, whenever it comes to yeah. me, like, okay, these, these are all the CVs. And if some uh, some reference come from my uh, connecting network, so definitely I need to be really conscious about about that particular person, like, because he's not on my payroll. He's not directly in my team. Right. So my surveillance uh, has a limit and my jurisdiction doesn't reach to that level. Because uh, right. I cannot uh, uh, force him or pressure him, but what I can uh, do is I can give him a deadline. Like, hey, this is the deadline, so you need to finish right. it. So, uh, uh, to be honest, for me, uh, I I usually do a stepwise thing. Now, the very first thing now, uh, if a guy having say around like five years of experience, so I treat him as my team member, but a backup. Okay. So uh, he needs to graduate to the particular level where I can give him right. a good quality work because and uh, in that graduation phase. So first he needs to prove about like, OK, uh, uh, prove about the quality, the commitment with respect to the deadline, the time and the conviction. So these are the four most important part what I personally consider. So if right. these if these things uh, uh, he's proving in the span of say uh, say a year or probably let's talk on projects. So now if I'm giving him a project now uh, and if uh, some person if an X person is new to it, uh, newly introduced in my network, so I precisely I'll give him that work which is not with a high priority. Okay, even if he goes vanish like Pawan uh, currently like the people go vanish like boof gone. Right, so right. I'll not hamper my, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I'll not hamper my delivery because I have another plans. I have my another team member, right? right. So uh, first he need to prove about uh, his delivery pattern. So once he gets graduate, okay, yeah, this guy is uh, giving me a good technical support. So yes, he's graduated out there. Then uh, he is giving me in time. Okay, bingo, plus, plus one or plus five points, something. So this is how he needs to get graduate. Okay, so once he gets graduate in this entire phase, then definitely I can think over it. Ki, okay, now I can give him my plan A or my priority shots. Yeah, now this right. guy's committed. He has got a need to do. He's hunger to learn things, and uh, and he's responsible and taking responsibilities. Okay, done. So this is how he needs to uh, uh, go from point A to point B, achieving these milestones. Right. So, right. uh, getting the freelancers definitely is about the connects, the contacts, because uh, I happen to see there are quite uh, 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 quite a portals where you can just post your work and uh, uh, ask the people for uh, to bid it. I did that, and uh, honestly, I didn't have much of a success out there. Uh, so, I mean, I uh, I personally experienced with uh, some Egyptian guy. Uh, right. Uh, so he was doing fantastic work, like, okay, done, like whatever uh, I've asked him uh, without any hiccups. But one fine day where I was actually in the middle of something and uh, my delivery is actually on my, uh, my head and like, he's just like, oh, hey, uh, there's a network down and he started giving me an excuse. So I was like, what, what happened off the hook? So uh, <laughs> for me, my own network, that matters a lot. Now, for example, right. uh, uh, if somebody suggests me, yeah, this is the good guy. Definitely, uh, he needs to prove himself whether he's good or a bad. Okay, as a person, right. as a professional. And once he gets proved and uh, things, he is in my good books. So this is right. how uh, basically I start uh, giving the work and uh, started building up a community in my own network. Yeah. So this is what I. That's really excellent. Feel. Yes. Well, that's a very good point. Building a community of of network because. That is how the whole ecosystem forms of freelancing because there's a lot of work. We need to outsource work. They need to do the work. Without this yeah. ecosystem and, and, and dependability, it, it, it doesn't happen, right? That it becomes like loose, outgrown plants. And True. then you, you, you don't know which one and how to water, how much to, you know, it, it's like it's, it, it doesn't happen like that, right? Yeah. And that is exactly what we face. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Right, 
Right. So, Vicky, what's what's your experience? Because you've been doing a a, a lot uh, too, and and what's your experience? Because I'm sure that I have I have I've worked with a lot of studios. By uh, you know, by the way, I miss saying this. I mean, I've been facing the same issues. I founded Famulus Media and Entertainment. Before that, we were doing theme parks in Dubai and working with Japanese companies on Square Enix, uh, Square Enix, Capcom, and Final Fantasies and all that. And then we I formed uh, Famulus. And we have been doing a lot of Bollywood movies, high-end Bollywood movies. Uh, you know, we have done Mission Mungle, Special Lockdown, we're doing Gunfirst. We've worked on a few Hollywood movies like Misfits and, and uh, Occupation Rainfall. And we're also doing our own IPs. You know, we're creating our own IPs and original content. So the same thing that we are, we are facing, we're trying to make a pattern, we're trying to make a system which can work. So what is your experience, Vicky, in, 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 in this field? And how do you choose your freelancers? Okay, so, well, um, as a freelancer myself, I guess I'm not really in that position to choose a freelancer, but I, I do agree with all the points that the other two panelists have mentioned. That's actually how they pick as well in Hollywood, except probably less intense. So I was like, wow, this is pretty impressive. <laughs> so, so uh, but anyway, um, to answer the question on the platforms, honestly, um, and they're right too, like it's word of mouth based. There's really, even if you start out as a fresh entry level artist, you put... Um, like on entertainment careers or whatever, those platforms out there. Um, I find that the more effective means of getting work as a freelancer is actually word of mouth and referrals. In, in Hollywood especially, um, I remember one time I went to Blur and then they'll be like, oh, by the way, do you know Michael? I'll say, which Michael? Oh, Michael from that XYZ studio. And then they'll say, oh, you know, he sent, right. we sent out an email to everyone we know right. in the industry say, hey, do you know this, this list of freelancers? And then, and then one of them pointed out, oh, I know Vicky, and then right. they kind of share right. the intel with one another. And I, I believe that's how also, you know, it's uh, in order to uh, kind of keep your foot in the door in visual effects, in, in the US at least, mm. is to ensure that you right. know, word of mouth works in your favor. And of course, referral based. And at the same time, I agree with what Mangesh has said, you know, even if someone referred you to them, it doesn't mean that they'll just take mm. their word for it. They will test you. And sometimes their test is not just a one-day test. It could be a trial. They'll be like, okay, come in for a week. We'll give you a try to see how you work with our team. And if that's good, then right. you'll stay for however how many projects we have. Um, so, yes. Hmm. Right, right. Excellent. Yes. And, uh, and you know, so, so, of course, in this whole process of, of choosing a platform, this reference thing, how, how does reference work for you? Because I feel referencing and networking – of like like Pavan also mentioned, Mangesh also mentioned that this referencing is a, so that means do we do we need do you feel that we need a different ecosystem to choose our freelancers because we're talking about referencing we're talking about dependability we're talking about knowing somebody having delivered the work successfully for us right but now we're also uh, trying to grow the ecosystem there are there's so many students and there's so many uh, you know internships happening there's so many people passing uh, out every year. And, and so there's a whole lot of people coming into the system right now. This industry is growing. So how, apart from referencing, there are tests, there are other things, which again, a very important point that Pavan had that, you know, you see a showreel and then you give a particular work to a, to a particular person, depending on the showreel, and you think that some, some other work is coming out of it. And you say, hey, I saw something else uh, from you. So how does this referencing work? And do you think that something else can also work like, like tests, like, giving them some specialized tasks, which we understand that they're the ones who are, who are doing it. It's just to grow the ecosystem. So hmm, I guess to that point, just off the top of my head, I think the, the trial yeah. periods work really well, at least in the US when I was there. Um, they'll right. have you come in for, and they'll, work, they'll give you shots that are not important. Basically what, you know, Mangesh has said, like right. unimportant shots, uh, shots that don't need to be submitted immediately. And they'll test you out for a week because they know that, yes, sometimes you're real, especially those, uh, I think that is, Back a few years ago, probably, uh, it was like a huge thing where people were just claiming credit for work they actually didn't do. That's why, you know, partially that's why uh, when they show their reels, it's actually not their work or they only did like a little, they added, added a fly or something like that. Um, right. So, yes. So, instead of having a one-day test or one-shot test or a take-home test or whatever, they'll have you come in right. for real work, but non-priority work. So, I think 
right. at least that's when my uh, experience of that that was the most effective right. in seeing number one right. you actually have the skills number two your real actually is your real and number three to see how well you communicate yes. with the team that they have right right and remember that just off the off my head that when we used to work with Square Enix and, and the Japanese studios, they used to just bring out random tests uh, live, and 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 they used to surprise uh, you know uh, the, the the people uh, with those random tests. And it used to be very helpful because you know it really brings out even if it's not what you're expecting, it still brings out your skill, not yeah. you know, uh, and and it's, it's more genuine. All right, gentlemen, so. I, uh, I'll now go again uh, the other way around, uh, Vicky. So you've just now answered. So let's start with the, with, the, with the next thing that we have. I think you shared the. So another very important point is how do we standardize the compensation process for this uh, sector and, uh, and nurture more talent? Because, of course, of course, uh, very recently, uh, I, I'm telling you, and uh, let's talk in international currency, say, say for the same job, I have paid $500 to somebody and I have paid $1,900 for somebody, yeah? So how do we make sure, first is the brief, what we want, the reference of the brief of exactly what we want, and how do we standardize the compensation for that and, and, and nurture also? It's not about, it's also about, by doing the, also about nurturing the talent because we need them and they need us, right? And by doing that, how do we nurture the talent? What, what do you think about it? What are the challenges for you in this? Um, well, I would say like there has been a lot of talk in the U.S. about forming a visual effects union of some sort. So right. I think mainly to tackle, number one, the compensation issue. They perceive it as an issue, at least. And number two, the work hours, mostly the work hours. Um, yes. And I think it's an unofficial union. I think it's just called visual effects union, <laughs> like just like that. Right. Um, but so far, it hasn't gained any traction. Uh, the, the other thing closest to a visual effects union is probably the Visual Effects Society, although that's not really like a union for that purpose. So I think when it comes to compensation, um, the, the rate, uh, we're just talking about freelancers here, uh, regardless of the department. So the rate would, should really be reflected in the quality of, of work and of, of course the experience that, and the talent of the individual. So personally for me, when I was in the US working, um, I found that it, uh, the the rates wasn't the compensation wasn't an issue at least over there because people set their rates and then the studio will either agree or disagree like if they feel that for example their budget has a you know certain amount of artists or certain amount of rates and they, they think that your rates should be lower than what you're suggesting then they will counter and then you just accept or you move on so basically it's kind right. of determined by your real your talent uh, and also the studio's budget, obviously, and what they're willing to accept. Now, to answer the, the other question on nurturing talent, again, I think if you try and standardize rates, it's not really going to nurture the right kind of talent because there are right. notably experienced artists who deserve more pay and who will get more pay uh, based on the work that they deliver. So it's not just saying, hey, I am great, please give me more. It's more like, hey, I've <laughs> done all this thing for you, so that's why right. it makes sense that you get more. Um, likewise, if, you, right. if you're talking about standardizing, uh, let's say, I'm trying to think of an example. So entry-level compositor, senior level, you don't want all of them to get you know, the same compensation. In the US, I'm just referring to one country, right? So right. you want it to right. be in a way that's here yeah, that kind of makes sense for their talent and they've earned it from that company. They've earned it from that studio. Yeah. So that makes sense. So if we're talking about that kind of standardization, then I would say like, um, in, in my opinion, it's better to not have a really kind of uh, uniformed compensation if we're talking about that specifically. So, yes. Right, right. All right. Mangesh, how do you think we, if we don't have a, a, a particular set of standardization at least, how do we tackle this issue of, of uh, you know, compensation? Because, of course, there are senior level, mid-level, junior level <laughs> artists, and our <laughs> needs are also based on that. And how do we nurture that talent and how do we divide it uh, how, how do you uh, face it and what is your view on this? Uh, actually, uh, what Vicky just said, uh, I'm actually, uh, I mean, precisely she already explained. Uh, this is just to uh, top on it. See, uh, my right. simple process is it's, let's define a metric system. Okay, let's define yep. a metric. Now, if uh, uh, short complexity versus the artist capacity, 
or rather artist right. level like uh, whether it's a senior junior uh, senior med or junior okay now uh, right. let's take an example of uh, just a basic thing which we call it as a roto okay now right. if there is a easy shot okay in eight hour uh, uh, a senior guy could uh, finish around say uh, random figures please uh, if he can finish his, uh, around like 80 uh, frames okay in one day in eight hours so the cost versus this guys uh, payment so in uh, in probably in a stipulated time he might finish uh, say 8 to 10 shots straight and he can enjoy his uh, its benefit according to the complexity of uh, uh, of the task so what we need to find out is the golden mean between this and definitely the company operational cost that's matter a lot because if i am uh, if i as a company i am bidding a particular uh, task assuming a roto task for 100 dollars right and my operational cost stand for around say uh, 80 dollars random figures again um, uh, my operational cost stand for 80 dollars so that 20 uh, 20 dollars basically should come in my pocket for rest of the thing right now here if if that particular task i am giving to my own artist who is sitting in my team he uh, he is right. consuming my entire operation entire facility he is consuming my mm. uh, electricity he is consuming my um, machine and every single minute thing uh, right from my oh, cafeteria right. uh, vending machine so yes these all cost uh, matters but that freelancer guy and on top of it i am paying him say suppose 1000 uh, rupees a day which is 30000 a month right right so, right uh let's not do that like okay now 1000 rupees i am giving him out uh, and uh, i should at least give uh, the freelancer with the same uh, uh, with the same statistics probably 800 right. because definitely i need uh, to say see why uh, why i give freelance there are two reasons okay first reason is to uh, to generate more sort of profit this is one reason because freelancers are coming with a lower cost i shouldn't be pronouncing it as a cheap cost because cheap stand for a different zone altogether but at a uh, lower cost so uh, this is one way and second if i got a tons of work and my uh, team is unable to uh, digest all that work so these are the two different scenarios right so this is right. one of factor where we could uh, standardize by defining the matrix and uh, the cost of it so this is what right. i think uh, so this uh, may help us to make the thing standardized yeah. and a little more professional because it becomes okay. easy for us to negotiate with the artist right right yeah right absolutely true i think i think, I, uh, I think mangesh this is a very very good point on uh, on creating a matrix system even though it has a uh, kind of you know it will be a little bit of back and forth there will be challenges that we need to meet because our work I always keep saying this our work is not a bank work it's not a financial ledger building work right or who is faster and who is slower it's not that it's a creative work and yeah. often there are challenges wherein what we want to create what is our end product and choosing people also sta- to a certain extent standardizing it uh, monetarily and uh, quality wise from considering the rank of the product yeah. and as well as the artist so the matrix system definitely helps so pavan uh, Sorry, Pavan. What do you think is uh, is uh, how, how do we how do we tackle this this issue? What is your opinion on this? The way usually how we handle work is like I have been uh, I'm I've been doing lots of things. I've been a 3D generalist. I've been head of match move like 15 years back. I've been a 2D supervisor. So. I know all these things. I've done all these things, whether it's roto, prep, match, mo, all these things I've done. So I basically know, and we basically plan like, okay, if the shot takes one day, it is a one day shot. Whether it right. is two thousand frame long, whether it is twenty frames long, so we estimate it only as a day shot. So we don't estimate it like, okay, uh, if you have sixty shots. so we say these 60 shots are 45 days of work and that has to come inside that real of okay 45 becomes 50 if now keep a lead of like 10 days extra but when we are talking to freelancers when they see a 600 frame shot it's right. a half a day job but they're like oh it's 600 frames long 
I will not. So the negotiation is always there. So like, no, you have to like, no, this is just you put the tracks, it works. If it doesn't work, let's again talk about it. So it's not the thing like, it's not like we don't want to negotiate, but we want it to be clear. Because when we pick up shots, the client also says, this is the cost for it. This is a one day shot. It's not like they don't know what, because whoever is our clients, our clients are usually all the VFX studios who are like right. big and uh, medium sized companies. So you cannot right. go and say the shot is six days when just because it's 600 frames. So what happens right. with freelancers is they always feel left out that, oh, this is 600 frames. So you must be charging a bomb for it. But that's not the case. The logic is always right. going to be simple, whether it's a 20 frame shot, if it's a one day, the 20 frame shot might take six days to logically finish. So it's not about um, the, again, coming back, we always deal with, okay, we bid man days, make sure the man days are closer to what it is. When we send it to freelancers, we keep a little leeway to make sure if it goes wrong, if for example, he does it halfway and he can't finish it for some reason or the other. We push it onto other things. So that's always right. the thing with bidding and working with artists. So as long as the artists, we give them the shot and say, okay, these three shots are yours. You have two weeks to finish these three shots. I would like to see them yeah. as they are done, not all three together. Because what happens when he sends all three together, then you see other issues or whatever. Then he'll keep fixing those for two weeks rather than just moving up so these are one of the issues right. which we noticed so i don't know i hope that answers your question yeah yeah no no absolutely this is a very good point uh and all points all you have made is so pertinent i think it helps a lot of studios and it helps a lot of freelancers and that's exactly what we're trying to arrive at uh today and it's a very good example this is a 600 frame shot i mean now the only thing is that now we've heard a, uh i i i mean the, the it first started with Square Enix with Japan, and they say that delivery cannot, delivery date cannot be missed, okay. right? Uh, a, a delivery is, is sacrosanct, right? That date is sacrosanct. Now, when we talk about that, that also means that sacrosanct date, uh, we have to deliver that quality. So obviously, there is, a, there is a little bit of a gap analysis here. The often six days become 10 days, and 10 days become 14, and, and so on, and the monetary differences. So I think with this, with understanding of what is there in the shot and the understanding of what is the content that the freelancer needs to do, their understanding, our understanding, I think we can maintain quality in a particular time frame that we have committed to the client. Otherwise, what at times happen is that we do miss the deadline and uh, probably not even achieving the quality at that point of time. So we end up needing extra days when we don't have control inside the studio, but the control is outside the studio with the freelancers, right? So this, this has to be very well defined then, right? Yeah, I think... I mean, it, it, it needs some standardization. It needs some kind of a matrix to standardize it, right? Yeah, yeah so uh, Suchi, what's your take, by the way, on this thing? Because <laughs> you own a, a fantastic See, I... and you guys are doing a fabulous job out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, see, uh, the, uh, I'll tell you why this is this topic is so motivating for for me. Is uh, yes, we're doing a lot of high-end work, and I've actually gone ahead and said no to a lot of volume work, or you can say I don't want to use the word because, uh, but it, there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, you know, uh, degrading about it. A lot of factory work. So we we even though it's uh, sometimes challenging, and I have to pay my bills and pay my salaries, but it's still kind of, uh, with grace of almighty, managed to keep to the work that we want to do. Now, that's the passion that we all started with. That's the motivation, right? To do that, what I face majorly, guys, I'll tell you, uh, inside studio, I have the control, right? But when I go outside, my main challenge is the delivery timeline and understanding the quality that needs to be delivered in that. That's why I, I raised the last point, you know. Yeah. So when I go for say an architectural stuff to a to a friend of mine or to a colleague of mine in Germany, I'm probably at times more uh, more uh, assured that okay, this is what we need to get than probably when I'm going to somebody whom I don't know. You know, it's not lo right. necessarily local or international. With somebody that I don't know, there I have an openness 
which is okay. Will it? Okay, great. His tutorial looks great. Maybe I've given them a test that looks great. But will it be done? Will it be done in the timeline? Or so I think there, uh, you know, intrinsically, for me, one point that I follow, how I, I call them if I can, to the office, or I do a Zoom call, and I talk about why primarily we have started this and we are doing this. You know, we are not filling up ledgers in the bank. Why are we doing it? Even at the time. And I don't want to break the paradigm, and I want to keep to the cost structure. But even if at times I have to kind of, uh, you know, probably uh, value the work a little more, uh, and in terms of recognition and in terms of, uh, you know, monetarily as well, I, you know, I'm I'm rest assured that the if he's capable of doing the job, the job will be done. Yeah. yeah. So that recognition, that financial value is very important. That faith is very important. As long as the person is capable. If you, if if I I can give that person the faith that he belongs primarily to this building of what we are building together as a team, uh, in credit everybody is there. If I if I char if I give a job to a freelancer, not one freelancer is missed from the credit. Never ever, you know. And the the building of an ecosystem wherein they are part of me and I'm part of them. It's very important. People are at times call that you know there's a lot of emotional decisions involved, but I feel this works. You know, Mangesh and and yeah. what you ask me, this works because they feel a kind of camaraderie. They feel a kind of connect to the cause that is that is that is happening here. You know, that's correct. Right. Cause, that's, you know, yeah. I'm 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 not. I'm, I mean, I did work in a bank long long time ago, and that's why I keep referring to this that I'm not filling up ledgers in a bank. I'm I'm in a creative process. And and the connect is very important. Even having said that, I will say that there are challenges at times, and there are failures at times, wherein we have to go back and forth and, and meet the deadlines. And and I'm very strict on quality, so I have to maintain that the quality is maintained. So I feel a standardisation, uh, more and more workshops, catering to the needs of the freelancers and the needs of the studios, and the cause and connect together. Looking at it is very important. It calls for joint interactions, you know, rather than lose connect. It's not a lose end that I throw a work at a at a freelancer and I pay him, and that's about it, you know. So it yeah. it is like what you mentioned also before. Pavan also mentioned before that it is about building your own, uh, your own team, you know, and and increasing that team, you know, fueling that team, educating that team, you know. I think that helps because more and more in today's world we are going to be depending on a lot of work given out, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So, guys, uh, you know, I'll start with Mangesh. Uh, Mangesh, what do you think now? Because we have spoken about the challenges, we've spoken about uh, you know our challenges, we've spoken about our, what do you think should, would be a major motivation for a skilled technician uh, to become uh, you know for a person to become a freelancer? Uh, you know, uh, everyone, we all have 24 hours in a day, and uh, and so how? Uh, just one. If, if I'm an artist and uh, and I'm sitting here in in the comfort of my living room or somewhere else or in the mountains uh, and I'm working and uh, and what is my motivation to become a freelancer? What do you think should be the motivation, especially in today's world post pandemic? Okay, uh, for this I don't have uh, much of a flowery answer for this, but what I do precisely yeah. is yeah, of course. Uh, uh, what I do precisely now if uh, So this is uh, uh, in my team as a freelancer, and or rather he wants to uh, go into freelancing zone. So the very first thing is now if I am giving certain tasks to uh, uh, to my team member, like okay, uh, guy, uh, uh, but you need to do uh, this kind of particular task, like say uh, short extension or green screen removal or whatever it is. Uh, I am absolutely sure that the very first pass or the version one I'm gonna receive is gonna go kickback. Because it's, right. I mean, I, uh, I guess I even uh, you also believe because whatever comes at the very first, most of the things goes uh, goes back because yes, we, there are like two three iterations at the least. Yes, exactly. So the 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 very first thing is, I literally teach him my technical language. Okay, because everybody right. comes from a different background. Now, where uh, uh, when I say SR, that is screen right. SL, that is screen left. So this language uh, source, so SRC stands for source. So this is what the technical jargons or the language what I understand and I use, or probably the client. Right. This is uh, quite generic and very basic. So uh, the very first thing is 
uh, I try to educate him like, hey guy, uh, hey buddy, this is the thing what you need to do. Okay, you need to understand first. And uh, second thing, whatever the cheekiest uh, question you have, you please ask me. Don't assume certain things. Because what happens, people started assuming things like, okay, uh, this uh, this flower may be uh, pink, but it's not a pink, right? Uh, it may be from, uh, say, red or close to pink or something like that, right? So, right, right. Things, or uh, with respect to the roto, so they uh, they make it like uh, blur. And people get confused and they start assuming. Right. The moment they start assuming, those guys are getting into a different zone altogether, and the arrow will not hit at a bullseye. Okay. So right. to uh, to make to make him understand. See, this is what an entire foundation to motivate uh, uh, a freelancer because uh, if right. you're just giving him a text like, "Hey, do one, two, three, four, five, six steps," and you should be achieving it. No doubt, he is a good reader. He is a good listener. But at the end of the day, for the first few things, uh, for for the first few takes, I actually do a spoon feeding to him. Like, please do this. Please do that. Uh, this is how it should be done, irrespective of how experienced he is. But it's my job to take that arrow to the bullseye. So that's my task. So once he's done, uh, then definitely he is happy because uh, he is getting the entire information and the communication is crystal clear. Okay. Right. So this helps him to achieve the goal to uh, to fulfill the target in time. So this is one factor uh, where I uh, actually work on. Uh, second, to motivate him, just yes, definitely uh, I try not to criticize his work, even if he is doing something wrong, because he has put in his efforts. Okay, uh, he has put in his efforts for eight hours wherever he's sitting. I don't care. But he has, uh, in his life, he gave eight hours. So, hey, dude, you did a fantastic job. But this is not, this is not the thing what I wanted. This is the way it should be. So that guy gets right. a little, okay, relaxed. Okay, 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 okay. I haven't done much of a bad, but the things are under control. Despite of which, it may not be under control. But we need to give him certain uh, assurance, certain support mentally, financially. So any which ways we are uh, paying him whatever right. he wanted. But this is right. the uh, uh, mental uh, relax, relax thing. So you please work on whatever things. But your right. planning is important. So help him in planning his uh, goal. Help him in uh, making his milestones to achieve. <coughs> right. This, these things makes him happy, makes him connected with us, and uh, lesser chance of uh, deviating from the topic. You know, uh, to reach the okay. goal or uh, to the task. So this is how I give, and definitely uh, I try to put his name uh, into a credentials, which helps him to boost his uh, INDB profile. So, so yeah, these right. are all the activities, which is very basic. So this is the only thing what I do to motivate my people, uh, including my team right. and uh, the freelancing team also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great, Mangesh. That's excellent. Uh, Vicky, uh, what do you think? You know, how, how do you motivate the freelancers? And uh, considering uh, he's also a human being working for certain hours for the project, right? Um, so, let's see. The question was, okay, so what would motivate someone to get to freelancing? Is that, right. is that the question? Okay, yes, so, yes, yes. Um, I would say it's quite interesting to hear all of your perspectives because in the U.S., at least the visual effects industry in Hollywood is very freelance by nature. So, Technically, right, right. when you get into visual effects in the U.S., it's like you don't have a choice but to be a freelancer because the industry in, in, in Los Angeles, at least, is very is geared and designed in a way where um, if once the project's done, if there's nothing else, they will you have to move on to something else. So people are kind of groomed to be freelance by nature and it's more like whether you have the option to be an employee at a studio. Um, so as okay. for motivation, uh, I mean, besides obviously, um, if you're working in the US, um, the motivation is if you want to continue to be employed, you have to be a freelancer. Um, I would say like bring value to the studios. Um, so don't just go in thinking that, oh, I want to work on this project because I want to work on this project. Don't think like that. You have to think about the business owner. And, and actually, to be honest, most freelancers in the USA don't. I have met many of them. Like most of them don't think this way. They only think about, okay, I want this on my reel. That's all. But they should think, right. you know, um, as you know, as motivation is like, okay, how can I bring value to your studio? How can I uh, not only deliver on time and execute the shots 
according to the specs, whatever, but also at the same time, bring additional value and communicate with right. the team. So what I noticed that um, some freelancers, again, communication is very important. When they go in, they don't clarify. They just jump in again with the flower example that my guest brought up. They assume things about the shot when actually that's right. not what the designed plan is. And it, they end up wasting time. And more importantly, they end up wasting the studio's money. So, so yeah, so, um, you know, having communication skills is very important. Right. At the same time, think about what you can give to the studio, not just about yourself. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a very, very great insight. Pavan, what do you think uh, should be, uh, what are the, what's the motivation do you feel as to you? I mean, uh, freelancers, I would say this would relate more to employees than freelancers, but I'll just say it because like, uh, when I used to work in Hyderabad, this is like uh, 99, I used to work in right. a studio and I used to like be the supervisor there. So what we used to do, we used to have a six day week in those days. So right. the sixth day, like on Saturday, was like a training day for everybody. So. If right. you think you didn't know something or if you knew something smarter, you are going to share it with the entire team. So the entire team grows that way. So that really builds like, okay, uh, we used to have a inferno there, like nobody was supposed to like touch it. But like yeah, on Saturday, anybody can. So if you want to go try something out, sit on it, go ahead. So that kind of motivates you. But in like in London, I mean, on Saturday, nobody wants to come, so everybody wants to take yep, the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to pay <laughs> London rates and say yes, please learn. But yeah. The thing is, yes, what we do is we have like lots of tutorials, like uh, for Houdini, for Maya, and whatever we have. So we like share it and say here, I mean, these are all the tutorials the company has got. Right. Go and learn all these, whatever you want. So you keep learning while you're working and learn to like if you want to learn lighting, if you want to learn animation so we have loads and loads of tutorials we had like digital tutors so a plural site today so we had that right. subscription so here you have the entire tutorials for you whatever you want to learn sit and learn so that gives them an extra motivation in terms of work right. like yeah, everything that skills you know, this yeah. as well even if i'm at home i can still open it and learn it so you don't need to be in the office right so if you give right. them nice uh, I mean, obviously, I'd say pay more, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. Can, but yeah, right. these are things which help. No, that's a great insight. That's a great insight. Uh, I feel that you know one more point I'll add, uh, which I feel that like for in all fields, if 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 for freelancers and for aspiring uh, artists, uh, independently working uh, or would be working, I feel that to add that little extra in any 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 field that you work. To add a little bit of personal touch to it when you're working because it's your passion, a little bit of extra, it shows, you know, if you're working uh, apart from money for the passion of the project and if you put that passion to your work, adding that little bit of extra, it definitely shows it in their work. Yeah. And, and you feel it as a creative head, as a creative uh, you know, person, you feel that what is coming out, you know. Uh, so guys, I think we're having a fantastic session. I, I, feel, not, I feel like going for another half an hour, but we don't have the luxury. Uh, and I'm really enjoying this, but it has a last thing. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, what are some of the challenges uh, that the freelancer gets quickly, uh, because we, we like about uh, seven minutes left, and if we have any questions, I'll see. But uh, we have spoken about our challenges. We've spoken about what we feel and what they should add. But quickly, a few words uh, from all of you uh, on the freelancers and aspiring uh, artists who are coming into this field and working independently, I would rather say independent artists because that's a, you know, they're doing great work. Some of them are doing excellent work. For them, what are the challenges, you know, and how come they overcome those challenges? What are the challenges they face in probably choosing a studio, choosing the work? Uh, what do they do about it? If you can quickly just summarize it, all three of you. I'll start with Vicky. What do you think, Vicky? Uh, very quickly, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is the competition is actually even more globalized today, more than ever, because studios now are more they are more open to the idea of remote work uh, to a certain extent because you still need the visas and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, right, so right. Um, global competition is real and is even more, you know, 
this is more applicable today than ever. Um, so I would say very quickly, probably make sure that your portfolio is actually yours and, and portfolio is still king. So regardless of where you're from, I mean, to a certain extent with the work visas, but ignoring that, regardless of where you're from, if you're going to another country, studying there, working there, portfolio is going to be king. Excellent. Excellent. Mangesh, what do you think? What are their challenges and how do they overcome it? See, the, I mean, uh, being once, I, uh, once I was a uh, freelancing supervisor, so uh, your homework is really important and uh, your homework, rather my homework, I used to do my homework as first thing first to see the, and I mean, this is the other side of the uh, scenario, being a freelancer. So what I used to do is uh, definitely if some work is coming, who is giving me the work? So I need to uh, know that answer, like who is giving and what's his profile, whether uh, that he is an individual or a company. If it's an individual, let's uh, speak out in the community how uh, how is that person is, uh, whether it's a pay stub is okay, whether he's giving me a payment in time, how it's the communication pattern, whether I'll be able to understand his technical language. So uh, this is uh, quite important, uh, uh, and I did that practice, of course. And uh, when when it comes to a company, so then the things are pretty much clear because it's a entire entity. So yeah, that company is not to go uh, anywhere else. But yes, definitely uh, you need to do a certain homework, whether a company pays you in time or what's their credit limit. Now there are some companies. Uh, once you finish, once you deliver, they may, uh, they may give you after 15 days or 90 days. So do you have got that survival uh, time with you? So 90, but everything finds okay. But when I need money, so after a project, there is a credit limit or say uh, payment terms. Like, okay, I'll pay you after 15 days or I'll pay you after 90 days. So uh, do I have that kind of capacity to, to survive till that 90 days? Or do I have got another work also uh, where I can right. uh, uh, work it out with that finance? Right. So these are all uh, factors where a freelancer should definitely take care of and definitely the kind of project the kind of task right. and uh, his own SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threat. So he needs to analyze right. himself. Uh, just don't run behind the money. Like, okay, this guy is giving me the best, so I should work. But don't choose your work carefully. Yes. Yeah, choose your work really carefully. That's the only key. For you to Based on your skills. Yeah. Skill so yeah. These are all the takes. I mean, this is what I used right. to practice once upon a time. So yeah, these right. are all my uh, uh, views upon, uh, upon it. Fantastic, fantastic, Mangesh. Uh, Pavan, how how does one what what, uh, what how do they choose and what are the what are, what are, what are the things that they they should look at creatively, financially? What is your quick take on it? I think communication is more important for me in terms of exactly what you want to do with the shop, whether it's lighting, texturing, detailing. Sure get as much references from the client as possible, make sure this is exactly what he wants and be responsible at all times. Give your best effort, even if you fail. I here will look at it, the client will look at it and say, yes, this guy has put on a really good effort, although he's failed. You don't like it, but you can see that he's tried to do something good rather than just randomly finish something and see it, this is what I have. And then I would say, backup i've had this issues with so many people oh my hard disk is gone my this is gone these are yes, yes, yes. which we don't <laughs> want to hear and yes. also try and understand the client's aesthetics in terms of color sense and all these things when right. you're from different you know, you're working in india you're working in japan because everybody has right. different tastes so if you have a client in let's say japan try and see what colors they visualize all the time so you get an idea of how they think in terms of all basics like aesthetics. So that's yes. one more thing. And yeah, if you're in a different country, see what's a good responsible rate for a top right. level artist in that place. And don't compare it. And compare. With, yes. Let's say the US or New Zealand, they're the highest payers. So if you keep comparing right. it with that, I mean, at the stage when you're really good, you can charge those rates. That's definitely right. Good. Right. Whether you live in India, whether you live anywhere. Absolutely. So if you're really good at your work, you can charge the top end rates for that particular tasks. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. 
Excellent. So I, I think, you know, it's, it's creatively your portfolio, what you want to do based on that, choose the companies, uh, you know, uh, carefully and uh, and then uh, select the rate because it's very easily available in the global world today, in this modern world today to understand what should be the rate for the quality of work that you are delivering. So based on the motivation of the quality of your work that you're doing, choose the studios and choose the rate and grow in a more uniform pattern. And that will create the ecosystem better. For us as well, I think it's the same thing and we choose the, choose the same way uh, you know, to create this, this, this independent artist, uh, whom we call freelancers, this ecosystem stronger. Uh, guys, I think it's a fantastic session. I personally enjoyed it a lot and, and hearing from all of you, I've, I've gained my knowledge and I, and I know that what I'm feeling is not individual. Uh, we're all in this together and trying to grow this. Uh, I think we should all connect uh, separately as well. Bhavan, I'll reach out to you. There's, we're shooting in London. Uh, recently, I'll be there. So I'll, I'll reach out to you. And it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing to have all of you, Vicky, Mangesh, Bhavan, uh, all of you here today. And thank you, India Joy. And thanks to all of you for being part of this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.